Now this this is Mark Thomas from Facebook sent me a video which is edited um, been doing some great posts on videos uh, and it, it was this one now we all I think have seen this so recent Lancaster announcement was made by the Lancaster University about particulates being in human brains and the magnetized type of nanoparticles which cause problems now I'm going to play Mark's video in a minute but I want to do some small statements and some facts about nanoparticulates mercury aluminium and some of the changes it makes as a neurotoxin and this will make big sense now we all know there is a serious program being given by even the UK government have agreed it back in 2013 2014 officially and never told the public and we can see loads and loads of statements about we need to do geoengineering adding particulates into the atmosphere and cool down the planet now this is another well-known clip by David Keith and he states about injecting aluminium particulates and other um, particulates uh, including acid into the atmosphere but let's just refresh our memory for a second and the hu helmet, human health impact of small particles the answer is well we haven't published it that was the first thing we looked at with some of the leading experts who do uh, epidemiological research on human health impacts and it's not even close to the issue the so so let me be more careful here we're to separate out the toxicological but so the illumina we've only begun to research and publish nothing so these are the programs that they say they are thinking of doing but we know otherwise however let's take this forward I made a video regarding the reaction between aluminium and mercury and this is the National Academy of uh, oral medicine and toxicology and it speaks about smoking teeth and poison gas I won't go too long on this because we'll get to the video in a second but it proves that mercury from amalgam fillings is is potentially death dealing because it floods out of the uh, fillings up to 47 percent of the mercury comes out of the tooth in the first five years and 50 percent of the weight of the tooth is mercury that is catastrophic so one filling one filling is enough so as it shows later in this video um, the toxicology of mercury I'm trying to prove that it's already in our bodies now after just a few weeks they'd actually put into a sheep a few mercury fillings and after a few weeks they found mercury in the stomach in the liver the kidneys and also in its head now you've just heard David Keith talking about putting hundreds and hundreds of tons of aluminium nanoparticulates into the atmosphere and we also have mercury this is the reaction between aluminium and mercury speed it up over 30 minutes now you won't see this to the end this aluminium girder is completely 100 percent exhumed as a chemical reaction between these two heavy metals and the fumes it gives off make the mercury a hundred times more neurotoxic and they've just admitted for us having nanoparticulates in our bodies so we'll stop this here that that good actually completely disappears now the brain tissues of all animals are very very similar the design and structure and the reaction to mercury is almost all exactly the same and this is just mercury you'll see held near this brain cell and within seconds it retracts and destroys the brain cell over the next 30 minutes, the neurite membrane underwent rapid degeneration, leaving behind the denuded neurofibrils seen here. It is important to note that growth cones in all animal species, ranging from snails to humans, have identical structural and behavioral characteristics. 
In this experiment, neurons also isolated from snail brain tissue were grown in culture for several days. So, the mercury alone can destroy the brain cells. Add that with aluminium, it's a hundred times more neurotoxic. Hence the brain problems that we're having with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Now a number of us, Max Bliss, Terry Lawton, myself, Ian Simpson, and another lady who escapes my name um, from Europe, um, who gave the talk there by the way. Um, there's one talk, I, we were there in the audience asking questions and I asked David Keith about aluminium, he couldn't answer, he walked off. But there's one person here that we, um, we want to to uh, mention and it's Stephen Salter and Stephen on a video in front of us talked about nanoparticulates and one of the problems they have is that the nanoparticulates don't stay suspended in the atmosphere sufficiently and he says by hitting them with electromagnetic and um, magnetic frequencies these will stay suspended for a longer period of time now think about this magnetic frequencies electrifying the atmosphere that will now magnetize nanoparticulates I'll repeat that magnetize nanoparticulates now I'm going to show you a video in a moment that speaks about magnetized nanoparticulates these were the people there at the conference day the keynote speakers and we were there it was at Cambridge University it was the 12th to the 14th of March 2015 last year some of the speakers there interestingly was well Ken Caldera <laughs> David Keith Alan Robock out in the full team and it was Josephina Frail Martin who gave the, uh, the other talk as an activist along with Ian Simpson and the gentleman Stephen Salter is there and he gave the talk on aerosols affecting the atmosphere and keeping them suspended and this is the actual video of the day is, uh, from Stephen Salter Stephen's at the University of Edinburgh and he's going to, we're now switching back to uh, talking about marine cloud whitening. So he then goes on to, uh, to give his talk and I've been trying to find the section where he mentioned this, it uh, goes on for quite some time, I need to get this out, I will post it again later, but he does continue to talk about the effects of the aerosols, but we witnessed him talking about suspending it. Um, with other equipment and frequencies. Now Stephen was talking about aerosols being transferred a <laughs> function everywhere to everywhere seasonal. In fact, the whole planet to be covered in aerosols. This is a, a model discussing the deployment of aerosols. Which scatter are you getting in these results? Um, now, uh, marine cloud brightening has always been the neglected poor relation, uh, and uh, we get blamed for all the unfortunate side effects of stratospheric sulfur. And in order to have a little bit of a fight back, I'm going to show you this slide, which is done by some quite good guys here. And they're showing that if you put in five megatons a year of SO2, you're going to be doing a bit of warming up in the Arctic. So he said putting five megatons of SO2 will warm up the Arctic. Interestingly this was done by uh, Alan Robock, Boucher, Jim Haywood, <laughs> um, some of the famous geoengineers. But this was a model of what would happen if they deployed uh, this and it's warming the Arctic. So if we can prove that they are deploying um, aerosols then there is some litigation <laughs> about to be proceeded with but let's come back to the aerosols um, being suspended in relation to our film on finding it in the brain 
So let's go into uh, Mark's video. I thought this was a, uh, a great idea and twist. Just notice the background. So here at Lancaster University, we've made a recent discovery. We've found for the first time that there are literally millions of tiny magnetic crystals inside human brains. Those crystals shouldn't be there. So here at Lancaster University, we've made a recent discovery. We've found for the first time that there are literally millions of tiny magnetic crystals inside human brains. And those crystals shouldn't be there. They consist of magnetite, a strongly magnetic material that is damaging to our brains. It, it causes the formation of very reactive oxygen species, such as free radicals, that cause cell damage and eventually cell death, the hallmarks of diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Where do these particles come from? They look strikingly similar to magnetic particles that occur in the airborne pollution mix. And where do those particles arise from? They come from vehicles, particularly uh, through combustion of fuel, through the frictional heating of brake pads. And we can actually walk down the street and be breathing those particles up through our noses and directly inside our brains. Our work doesn't yet prove a causal link between these particles in the atmosphere and Alzheimer's disease, but it's a potential environmental risk factor that we can't afford to ignore.